I've been skating for about 10 years and when I was around 14, I managed to dislocate my knee and tear my ACL. I had to do a bit of prehabilitation before a surgery that I had to get to recorrect and fix my knee. And then post-surgery, I actually had to run through about nine months of physiotherapy exercises. Whilst I was doing that, I think that's where I just kind of discovered a bit of a passion for just exercise-based rehabilitation. When I initially did my knee, so I tore my ACL and that created an instability within my knee. I had to wait for my surgery, but you know, as all skateboarders do, I couldn't stop skateboarding at that point. So every time I went back to skateboarding, you know, I'd re-injure myself and I'd dislocate my knee again. It's a vicious, you know, cycle. You go back into it because you love skating and you can't stop skating. It is, it's difficult. And I think that's something that a lot of skaters deal with as well is sometimes they don't know how to properly help themselves heal or rest or recover from any type of injury. It's that skate or die attitude, you know, where people, you know, generally don't look after their health as much as say a footballer would. They would normally stretch after a session, you know, they don't take food with them, they don't eat raw, healthy, maybe vegetarian, vegan type foods, you know. And there is a bit of a party lifestyle aspect sometimes, especially on like tours, you know, when people go out with uh, the teams and it's sort of like drinking, smoking, you know, they do that type of stuff. And that is the stereotype of it, but I think there is a change that's coming within skateboarding. And you can see it within the top professionals, Paul Rodriguez, Neen Williams, Sibo Walker, like these are all guys that are starting to post, you know, some of their exercise routines, the, the foods that they make and they take on their sessions with them. And, you know, the techniques that they do to recover from a skate session. This change, this focus that we're having more now on health is quite recent. So there's an older generation of skateboarders, you know, the pros back in the 80s and the 70s, these skateboarders may not have focused as much on health, you know, not taking care of your body. It carries on into later life. And some of these skateboarders who were back in their prime on their board, they, they can't put in that same sort of effort because their body has become so battered and they haven't maintained it. And that's due to the lifestyle, you know, the party lifestyle. A focus on health is going to be really crucial for the next generation of skateboarders coming around. With the rise of the 2020 Olympics and skateboarding for the first time being in the Olympics, there's going to be a massive influx of kids who want to learn to skateboard and they're going to start skateboarding. And what's going to happen is they're going to look at these high level professionals looking after their health and taking care of their bodies. They're going to look at them and go, right, so I need to look after my health and I need to take care of my body. And that's something that is gonna be really crucial in keeping the next generation of skateboarders healthy and just progressing the sport in general. There is a growing community of therapists, whether that be physiotherapists, you know, coaches, sports rehabbers like myself that are focused on skateboarding. So these are therapists that skateboard themselves. You have The Daily Push, the skateboard physio. You also have Dr. Kyle Brown, and he's working with, you know, Sibo Walker as well. He goes to him for advice. And these are all just people that you can reach out to in your community. It's something that people need to tap into just so they can, you know, progress within skateboarding. 
avoid injuries, prevent further injuries, as well as, you know, looking after yourself generally. It's going to help you skate better and for longer.